Welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity Special Shout out, shout out to Artosis for giving me a huge raid, which prompted this as a special late night commentary. Bottom left hand corner, we have, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Satamha? Satama. But this is actually Grast. He's starting as the brown Protoss bottom left hand corner, upper hand corner. We have a barcode Zerg player, and this is a BSL highlight game of Grast in particular. This is going to be on Eclipse. And I'm expecting an epic match because I asked for epic replays from people. I'm also, after this series, so I guess for people that are watching live, if you want to watch tomorrow at 9.30, I'm also going to be highlighting some replays I got from Rancor and BSL. I'm not sure when this ends up on YouTube. But BSL Season 13 has just started. And it is going to be epic. It is just going... I'm extremely excited about all the players. I actually noticed in particular that a lot of the North American guys that I was able to highlight as part of the NA team battles... I've managed to make it into the round of 24. Maybe it's, I'm not sure if it's, uh, they kind of honed each other's skills and just ended up higher up. And there's just, uh, in the top 100, there's a lot of names that are very recognizable from either games I've highlighted uh, from these players or things at large. We have Grast opening up Pylon on the top, which leads me to believe I've seen him do this in his BSL defenses. Oftentimes he'll go gateway on the low ground and essentially the goal is to kind of confuse his Zerg opponent because he'll so, he'll show go, uh, gateway low ground and oftentimes go a second gateway up top uh, just to do a little bit. The, on, the only problem with going this route is it then becomes difficult to go for a front door seal as a follow-up. And we are going to see it looks like an overpool on the opposite side of the map. So Zerglings potentially could end up on grass side of the map and it could be a little bit more difficult to defend. So here's that second pylon. But that second pylon, by the time the Zerg scouts this, everything looks normal. And then there's just this pylon up here. I uh, will have to, I don't think this is going to do anything to this barcode Zerg, who's just going to go by Teal, I guess, Zerg from this point on, because I'm not sure who that is. Probe is moving out to the natural expansion, wants to disrupt the drones. There are two drones in place. Manor pylon to go ahead and, and disrupt that. So they're going to have to be delayed at least for a bit of time as the spawning pool just finishes. We do have, we should see initial six, there's a slight delay on that third larva. And the probe getting a good look at it. And now the drone actually, rather than even bothering to scout, just going to try to get the scouting done with the Zerglings, just straight up going to go ahead and take that 12 o'clock hatch. Since that base here was disrupted, it looks like that pylon was canceled as far as a follow-up. And this is also going to buy additional time for Grass to go ahead and potentially get more Zealots out. Maybe go for, for oh, never mind. He actually opted to just go straight up two gate. So he wants to get two gate pressure up. His probe is down. It looks like that pylon is going to fall as well. And now this is really going to hurt this Zerg player because the Overlord is going to be able to spot the Zelts incoming, but I'm not sure if he's going to be as aware of the number of Zelts that are going to be incoming. However, there still is opportunity with, again, a more wide open front door for Zerglings to kind of flood through. And this is a harder defense. Two gateways do not a front door seal make. So there is going to be a delay on the economy. So this initial Zealot getting surrounded, Grass trying to micro, and bring it back. Second Zealot going to engage, and this should be an indicator, and actually a third Zealot trading. This should be an indicator that additional Zerglings are needed. And we see additional Zerglings are being built. 12 o'clock hatch, just slightly off, and that's gonna be the additional larva that are potentially gonna be needed. Once those additional larva come online, it's gonna be basically, it's gonna come down to grasp, to defend, maybe get somehow back to home base, to get some sort of front to a seal. This is gonna be a very delayed Nexus. And then, on the opposite side, Barcode Zerg wants to make sure that he produces enough Zerglings to kill all the Zealots, but not overproduce Zerglings and get his economy back up and rolling. He is going to have three hatcheries so he can very quickly build drones. So I'm not sure how this is going to work out. Grass actually splitting the Zealots, doing a good job of regrouping one, actually makes an end around. So he might be able to get some disruption in that probe line. Now, four Zealots regrouping on the Zerglings. It looks like Barcode Zerg did not realize that he was regrouping, and this Zealot making his way into the main. He should be actually able to engage those two Zerglings. This Zealot, free against two damaged Zerglings, making their way back to the main. The drone's pulling off, so a bit of economic disruption, a decent defense on Barcode Zerg's side of the map. Forge on the front, still no Nexus, keep in mind. So there still needs to be additional economic disruption. There's a lot of probes being built, however, behind all this. This 12 o'clock base still not saturated. The natural expansion still not saturated. And we actually see, we actually some drones not even mining uh, for the Barcode Zerg in the interim. So Grass continuing to try to fight in the middle of the map. He wants to try to get position. He's, it's kind of a game of cat and mouse now. He doesn't want those Zerglings to run by and do additional disruption where the barcode Zerg on the opposite side of the map, it looks like he's waiting for speed to finish just because that makes those Zerglings 
all the more, just makes their AI more intelligent, makes it easier to engage in these fights. And he wants to wait until he has superior Zergling numbers to go ahead and surround and take out these zealots. More zealots continuing to flood out for Grast. So he's still continuing to dedicate to this two gate pressure. The Zergling's now coming down, getting some shield damage. The zealots looking to regroup. And it looks like this is going to be five zealots engaging. And I believe that is a superior number, especially with a lot of these Zerglings damage. That's only 10 Zerglings trying to engage. Looks like finally some saturation happening. And both players at this moment backing off a little bit. Grass going to take these Zelts back to his main. His Nexus just now warping in. He does have a decent amount of probes to go ahead and push back. He's been very delayed on his gas count. Barcode Zerg does not look like he's great. So he's just built Zerglings as far as a follow-up. So the game kind of adjusting. He's now going to layer. As things line up with this timing, it's kind of a bit of a disruption overall. Second, uh, wow, instant second assimilator. I do believe that Grast is going to be okay as far as the, yeah, he's already got that assimilator mostly finished. And he wants to go ahead and get that Stargate down. He should be able to plant that and basically have any sort of, have a decent amount of anti-air, should be able to get the scout in and press from there. He's done a pretty good job of slowing Barcode Zerg's economy down. However, uh, Grast is running up against an even drone, uh, even drone count versus probe count. And keep in mind his gas as far as where he was able to fill it. And the timings just of this as far as the disruption. I, I, I know that he plays this a bit standard, kind of doing this disruption of gateways on the on the front and actually skipping skipping Stargate opting for double gateway or at least getting the Stargate a little bit later going gateways first that's going to allow him to get a few additional units out the layer just finishing now the question is is does barcode zerg well, I think he's going to opt for yeah the fourth hatchery it's going to peel back more towards getting the uh, hydralis den on the front and going probably four hatch five hatch hydra we'll see sometimes you'll see uh, four hatch high uh, four hatch spire still and still a grouping of mules. I like what he's doing, just checking out these additional expansions, making sure additional bases weren't taken. Grass able, is going to be able to take out an Overlord overhead, which is going to do at least a slight bit of economic damage, and it's going to put his opponent in the dark. He's getting level one weapons. Looks like we see a fifth hatchery, so it looks like this is going to be a pushback to five hatch Hydra, plus a SimCity on the front door. And there's still... Here's the thing with this five hatch Hydra play, though. Grass did grab his second gas, so he is making his way more towards, uh, and he does have a set of Livadune. This suggests he's going to go more, I don't know, dark, the Dark Templar style tech, and I feel like going the five hatch rider is a decent way to handle that. However, he's got enough Zerglings where I don't know that he really needs to worry as much about uh, Dark Templar flooding out without him being able to see it. Although that Overlord getting taken out does mean a, a Dark Templar if it was peeking out on the front. Um, it, was, it would take longer, essentially, for it to get these Zerglings need to watch for Shimmer is what I'm saying. They don't just have that Overlord to rely on. Corsair is making its way out. This is actually... I'm wondering if... How delayed this was comparative. And actually if there was a cancellation. Because this feels so late compared to when he got that Stargate up. Additional gateways plopping down. All sorts of gateways plopping down. Templar Archives on its way. And I believe Grast is just going to sit back. Probably get the robotic facility. Get the High Templar out. Get the Psy Storm out. Play the game from here. Barcode Zerg. Let's see if he capitalizes on this. He's already got decent saturation right here. He's got the Hydralisks in position to deal with that Corsair at the 12 o'clock location. Looks like he's already got a grouping of Hydralisks. And I think this creep colony, he's already got a grouping to build a sunken colony. So he's already well, sh and this is preemptively, already well shelled up at this stage. So Grast is going to have to make maneuvers. Phenomenized Carapace also upgrading. That's a level one Carapace as well. Level one weapons is going to finish. I'm curious if Grast is going to go for that standard Zealot leg speed attack. He is getting that Dark Templar on this side of the field, and I like this play again because that Overlord's not in position. It's going to be up to Barcode Zerg to basically keep an eye on that front and make sure that those Zerglings aren't just getting obliterated on the field. I do believe if, if it's a one-shot kill on the Zerglings, it doesn't fire off that alert. Additional cannons being placed for Grast. Just because he's a bit concerned, and that, this feels a little bit preemptive. He's a little bit worried about Hydralis Bust at this stage. A little bit early, he is not really using his Corsair to kind of cycle around and keep an eye on the Hydralisk count. Looks like there are Hydralisks growing in numbers at the 12 o'clock location, also at the natural expansion. He is going to be at risk of getting contained. He does have the Zerglings actually peeling back now. It looks like, yeah, good eyes on that Dark Templar. And Grast actually already fielding and moving up to that 9 o'clock location. He's going to try to clear that Zergling out. Let's see if he can get a pylon down, some additional cannons down to go ahead and get a third base established. 
I'm not sure that he's at this stage. This would be very greedy if he opted for this. He is putting a pylon in position. Their zerglings are moving in. They should be able to deny that. They could run around that Dark Templar, take that probe out. Looks like they're going to instead end up engaging the Zealots. Now there are not enough Zerglings to do it. The Dark Templar are going to block the ramp. Nice play by Grast. That might allow him the opportunity to go ahead and get some cannons down and get this up. But there's that probe. Yeah, it needs to protect that probe. Keep it from getting targeted. The Hydralisk count starting to grow. There are High Templar already out in the front building energy. Psystorm is online. We do see that Lurker Tech also being upgraded. It looks like that probe was taken out. Wow, Grass doing actually a poor job of protecting that probe at the 9 o'clock position, so he is going to need to send another unit out. Now with those Hydralisks moving out, it looks like there was a single Hydralisk remaining there, but at least tacking away at this. He doesn't have eyes on these Hydralisks pushing up to this 9 o'clock location on a single High Templar to try to defend this. There are no cannons in position. You can see we're losing that probe earlier, and not getting those cannon defenses is really going to hurt Grass. A great size storm, though, as these Hydralisks are pushing up, but this is just going to be an overwhelming attack force. So he's just going to end up losing this probe, losing this pylon, and losing these zealots. Just didn't have enough to really hold and protect. Does have level 1 weapons up, and he needs to keep that forge running. Because currently, his zerg opponent is going to have level 1 weapons online. He's going to have that lurker tech up. It looks like he's going to stick. He's actually added, it looks like, additional hatcheries at that 12 o'clock location. So he's currently sitting actually at 7 hatcheries. And at this moment, he's looks like he's going to play for more of a contained situation. Deny grass his third. Grass has snuck out with that Dark Templar to the 12 o'clock, but, uh, but that Funumunized Carapace, those speedy overlords are out there, so this Dark Templar is not going to last long. And I'm looking for that robotics facility back in Grass base, and it looks like instead he's grabbing a second forge. Is mostly There's a the robotics facility. He's actually grabbing a shuttle. Not seeing an observatory anywhere just yet. Usually that's the play you want to deal with the potential lurker contain. I like that he's moving forward to go ahead and push his opponent off his front so he isn't getting contained right off the bat. So the Hydralisks do have to cycle back in position. One grouping of Hydralisks able to pick one Eye Templar off and a whiff of a side storm after that. He does need to worry about those engagements right there. And Overlord almost losing its life. It looks like it's going to be able to push back. But more Hydralisks are starting to group up towards the mid. Currently, Grass is not, is not contained, but he's somewhat at risk. He's overprobed at the moment, does not have a third base. His opponent is at 45 drones. He's a bit ahead in supply. But Lurker is potentially... Oh, the Hydra is sneaking underneath. One Eye Templar down. Teal doing a good job of sneaking in. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and play the long-term economic game. He's going to go ahead, uh, grab that 12 o'clock location. One Zealot getting pulled out of position. And the Hydralisks, feeling they've done enough damage, going to go ahead and back off. Some probes have managed to sneak into that 9 o'clock. And Grass going ahead and positioning with his Dragoons, Zealots, High Templar in the middle of the map. My big question here is where are the Lurkers? Lurker Tech finished a while ago. I still do, don't see a lot of lurkers morphing out in the field, and it is lucky for Grast because he did in fact opt for a shuttle, and I still, do, I still don't see an observatory anywhere. There's the observatory finally. I don't see a lot of observers out in the field though to deal with a potential lurker threat. So Barcode Zerg missing a bit of an opportunity there to potentially one, get a seal or two, uh, do additional damage uh, on the front. He does have that single evolution chamber. It is remaining, he is building a, looks like a second evolution chamber somewhere, just finished. Needs to keep on top of the upgrades from this stage on. Level 1 weapons is finished. Level 2 weapons and a second forge is whirling on uh, level 1 armor as well. Although I believe it's you want to go up to level 2 armor initially before level 2 weapons. In the midst of this, for reasons I won't get into right this second in this cast. Grass with a decent supply lead. Starting to group up, but this is a very late third. And in the meantime, his opponent has managed to already grab a fourth base. Two Zolts are camping in this upper left-hand corner. This is a very important base to deny your Zerg opponent because otherwise they can get that double gas. And once Zerg gets gas rolling, they can get hit that, that late game hive tech and be absolutely brutal. A spire being built very late. Finally, Lurkers are being morphed in the middle of the map as more of a, a defensive measure. But there's plenty of Dragoons, a lot of Psy Storm to deal with this. And Grast is marching forward on the map and he really does need to go out someplace and start knocking his opponent's economy down before he moves up to that hive tech, before he gets overwhelming late game uh, Zerg material to work with. Some overlords spreading, and he's doing a pretty good job of trying to cycle through and deny some vision that has put his opponent in the red. Lurker's doing some damage to that Dragoon. <laughs> Actually missed the Dragoon altogether as they're warped through. 
Finally, the observers filling in. There is a Dark Templar alongside as well. The probes looks like having some trouble. Looks like they're going to distance mine for a cycle. And Grast actually trained to sneak a base in this bottom right-hand corner. While that's happening, the Zealots have moved out of this upper left-hand base. So it looks like that might go into bar might the barcode Zerg's hands. And the Hydralis just marching down. Cancellation. Yeah, he was taking that very greedily and very nakedly. He just didn't have the materials to really get it done. So barcodes are striking. That's a lot of minerals lost. Grass still economically ahead. Critically, he's got level 2 weapons and level 1 armor coming online. Let's see if he can keep ahead in that overall upgrade battle. However, Queen's Nest is being built. Lair's not that far back. And the Zerg has, as soon as he starts mining here, that's going to be a lot of gas to work with. High Templar exposed to Zerglings. And that is the entirety of his High Templar trying to back off. Two of them down. The other three look like they're going to... S Never mind. Two d only two remain out of the five. That is a huge loss. First of all, that's a lot of loss in just pure size storm damage that he could be able to execute. But secondarily, that is a lot of lost gas. And that means Grass really cannot push his map control as much as he might want to at this stage. Some Hydralis in the upper left-hand corner looks like this base is going to go into Zerg's hands. Grass still sitting on three bases. His main is now looking thin. His natural expansion is still running, but he's essentially at two base. The shuttle has been silent in the meantime. Grass is in a lot of trouble now. Even though he has the supply lead, even though he's got the upgrade advantage, his opponent is not that far off going up to Hive Tech. Looks like he's continuing to push the upgrades. He's got a second evolution chamber down to go ahead and catch up in that upgrade battle. Looks like he's trying to clear things out to go ahead and take that upper nine, but the Zerg already has an immense amount of territory, an immense amount of gas, critically, to work with. There's the double evolution chambers. And Grass still hasn't grabbed uh, a fourth base, and he's basically mining at two bases. Looks like he's trying to move in. Good size storm on top of those Hydralisks as they were unaware. Might be able to clear out this five o'clock location, but Hydralisks are flooding in for a counterattack across that nine o'clock base. And it looks like they, Zerglings are going to be able, Zerglings and Hydralisks and Lurkers, oh my, are going to be able to get on top of this. Let's see if Lurkers can get position. The rest of Grass's army fielding up to go ahead and clear this back out. Good side storms on the Lurkers, unfortunately catching that Dark Templar as well. The Zealots marching forward. Are they going to push Barcode Zerg back into his own territory? The Barcode Zerg needs to be concerned about actually holding this upper left-hand corner with this big, powerful Protoss army nearby. No probe here to go ahead and take this 5 o'clock location as well. There is a There are a handful of Zerglings to potentially go for a quick sneak probe kill in this bottom right. In case Grass did manage to cycle a probe this direction. Looks like three probes are making their way over there. Currently supply count even. Hive tech is just about finished. And Grass is now making his way up to the 11 o'clock base. He really does need to take this out and stop this gas. Looks like there's a bit of a pause and an unpause in the text. Always fun seeing that spamming of that. Moving in, there's only a handful of Hydralis side storming. It looks like a mostly Overlords as he's moving into this 11 o'clock location. But you see a large amount of teal starting to cycle across the map in the form of these Hydralisks. Some Zerglings grouping up. Are they going to be grouped up to engage this army, though? Currently, no hatcheries being taken out, no drones being taken out as well. It's just been pure army, and it looks like a handful of overlords killed otherwise. Great size storms engaging from the right. That army trying to get up that bridge from the left. Looks like Zerglings aren't a whiff of a size storm there. They are going to be able to get on the Dragoons. One hatchery is down, but there's still the mining positional hatch right there. And unfortunately for Barcode Zerg, he's kind of flooding in his units, single file, one at a time, which is allowing Grass to just get more damage done. And get some nice size storms actually as they're filtering in. Archon's morphing, but it looks like the drones, not a lot of drones getting wiped out. And that army gonna get smashed otherwise. And the Zerglings able to sneak through at that five o'clock base as that Nexus was warping in. So he's trying to sneak that Nexus during that attack, but he, instead he's gonna lose some high Templar grasp, getting caught a bit with his pants down. Not sure if he's uh, aware of this army getting assailed right this second. One Dragoon just lazy on the job. Come on, Dragoon. Your High Templar, like, High Templar are, like, higher in the caste society, right? Of Protoss, and this Dragoon's just sitting there like a lazy worker in the corner. Like, you're supposed to be reincarnated to defend these guys, and you're just watching them die on your watch. 
on your watch. He's going to get melted. That's also going to cost this five o'clock base. Grass trying to reinforce, but it looks like there's a counterattack to go ahead and deny units at that upper nine as well. So Grass once again boxed. So his natural expansion's gone. He's essentially mining at just one base versus essentially five base Zerg at this stage of the match. He does have level three weapons, level two armor, so decent upgrades. Oh, managed to hold this somehow, so that Nexus is going to be able to stand. If he can get probes over there, he can at least get mining again, but he needs to be very careful about defending this lower nine o'clock base. He also needs to make sure that five o'clock base gets up and operational, and he doesn't have much of an army to work with to make it happen. Fortunately for him, the barcode Zerg behind all this is just setting up, well, I'm not sure if fortunate or unfortunate, is getting his hive tech established. Adrenal upgrades are now in play, which is going to make those Dragoons all the more vulnerable. Defiler Mound, and as soon as you have Defilers with that Dark Swarm, also Plague, can really neutralize those Dragoons and really make Zealot... Adrenal upgraded Zerglings do pretty well against Zealot's late game. Fortunately for him, no Ultralis Cavern as of yet, although I do believe Barcode Zerg has the economy to make that happen. Grass moving out, getting aggressive with the army he does have, dropping some Psy Storms, just trying to catch, it looks like, a group of Hydralists, mostly whiffing, though, costing him a High Templar, is regrouping out towards that 9 o'clock location. There are Hydralists planted there in the middle of the map. I feel like Barcode Zerg is actually doing a great job with map vision. You can just see we're across all of his holdings. You really can see the entirety of this side of the map. He knows this 5 o'clock base is essentially in Grass's hands, but he doesn't really need to worry about it. Still, the critical thing, though, is he's not grabbed this Double Gas in the upper left-hand corner as of yet, and that really is the thing that will boost him and just rocket him ahead, because Zerg, they live and die on that gas. Still getting that gas, it looks like that 11 o'clock location as well. So currently sitting, it looks like this is mined out. His main is somehow, this, it's odd that this base ended up mining out uh, earlier. Natural expansion is looking a little bit thin, so he, but he effectively is still at three bases, versus just the two bases for Grast. Let's see if he can get this saturated. Is planting another hatchery right there. Could be big battles. So essentially what the Zerg wants to accomplish here is deny this nine o'clock base, which Grast is already setting up to defend and make sure he gets this base in the bottom right hand corner and then just has the bigger, beefier late game Zerg units as far as Ultralist, Defilers, Plague, and then cost efficient trades with the Zergling upgrades, etc. This shuttle, I'm waiting for the shuttle to be hero towards the end of the match. Overlord diving in, suiciding to go ahead and good, get a look at that army. Does in fact see that there's not a Nexus there, a bit of an oversaturation of probes right here out of necessity. And Grast has a lot of territory to cover. And keep in mind, he's got to pour out of this bottom left-hand corner. Grast going ahead, setting up, planning on denying this bottom right. The Zerglings moving in. They do have level one. One critical advantage for Grast here, though, is he does have a massive upgrade lead. So these adrenal upgraded Zerglings aren't going to perform as well as they might otherwise. So getting at least a little bit of damage done. Corsair moving in. A flooding of a lot of other units actually engaging to this 5 o'clock base. There's a Defiler in the mix of this. They might be able to wipe this base out. Zerglings pinning those Dragoons before they're actually able to get up the ramp. Psystorm clearing those Zerglings out. Some reinforcements coming across. They are going to die. They're trying to... Hey, where's the front? The front's right on top of you. A wave of brown moving from that 9 o'clock location. You can see that's been reoccupied by the Zerg. But honestly, one, one Defiler down here, and this entire base is breached. Lurker is getting overwhelmed as Grass moving in. It looks like... This has been recamped by the Zerg. He might opt to go ahead and take that in a moment. More Zerglings kind of peeling in. It looks like this, this attack petering out, though. Barcode Zerg not quite having the grouped Zerglings and Hydralisks. And critically not having... He's got the Defiler done in place, but didn't have Defilers as part of that attack. So it wasn't... An, it looks like he's just now getting Plague. So he didn't have the Defilers to drop the Plague. Didn't have the Dark Swarm to neutralize those Dragoons. And Grass now walking up. Great Psy Storm over those Hydralisks, catching them on both angles, obliterating them. This Lurker is not going to be long for life as well. In fact, it looks like it is going to be a stillbirth interior to that egg. So Grast also has the option of taking that bottom right hand base. If he can take this base, and I guess, in comp and then the opposite side of the map, make sure this is denied out of his opponent's hands, and then just gets favor favorable trades from there, which is more likely because he's starting to work towards maximum upgrades here. Nice Psy Storms from Grass, just blanketing the Hydralisks and positioning up. It looks like there is a counterattack of Hydralisks. Ooh, are they going to catch that shuttle? The shuttle moving up with some Dark Templar and High Templar, ferrying these units to the front. It looks like the Hydralisks now seeing the shuttle, but not quite able to get 
they're still just walking forward. So a bit misrallied there. I'm wondering if that's just straight really rally point and they just were on move command with a group. But getting obliterated otherwise. Some reinforcements making their way across. But Grast is now threatening that natural expansion. Did that shuttle get wiped out? I'm trying to keep an eye on where that shuttle drifted off to and want to make sure it didn't drop uh, to the main. Anything like that. So Grast still mining at that 9 o'clock base. Is also mining at the 5 o'clock. Still no double gas here in the upper left. Ultralisk Cavern is up. But no Ultralisk fielded as of yet. Looks like you do have uh, Kitness plating being upgraded. Another engagement, and it looks like same issue. Zerglings flooding across. They might be able to catch these High Templar if they redirect. But currently, Grass holding this high ground and inviting kind of battles, just throwing a threat and just getting pretty good trades again because of that upgrade disadvantage. More Psy Storms dropping. There is a Defiler in this grouping. No Plague dropped. Actually, it looks like the upgrades are starting to rebalance out. Still on level 2 Carapace, though, overall. Some nice Psy Storms overall, though. I think that shuttle was taken out in that last battle. If not, I'll try to keep an eye. While well, there's the distraction area attack happening here in the middle of the map to the right, it looks like Barcode Zerg is going to go ahead and try to establish that 9 o'clock base. And if he can get that established, get some, it looks like he's already got two lurkers. So if he can get a handful of more lurkers to that location, that can be difficult to evict without a lot of Psy Storm walking uphill. And Barcode Zerg doing a pretty good job of spending resources. Now has managed to grab one gas in this upper left-hand corner. 12 o'clock locations mined out, mains mined out, natural expansions mined out. So he's effectively at two bases. So it's kind of two base Protoss versus two base Zerg. But critically... Late game Zerg is now here, and we're even on supply. No Ultralisks. Looks like four Ultralisks will be taking the field momentarily. I'm looking for more plagues across these Dragoons as well. And Grass with Overlords overhead, is going to go ahead and take that base in that bottom right. If he can take that base and hold it, that might be the key to winning this game. Dragoons dealing with Zerglings across that right-hand funnel. Looks like Grass's army getting a little bit segregated. Psystorm's catching a lot of those Zerglings. More units being expended along the right. Grass doing a pretty good job. It looks like his has a pretty decent bank. But while all of that was happening, he's gonna he's gone ahead and established that nine o'clock base. Bottom right hand base starting to go up for Grass. Five o'clock still has plenty of minerals to work with. Barcode Zerg regrouping. He does have level 5 Carapace not that far away. Just needs to tap one of his evolution chambers and start that upgrade. A lot of Dragoons in position. I'm looking for Archons to start morphing. Because with Dark Swarm as a potential, with these Zerglings, oftentimes Archons can be the thing you want under field after you spend those size from some Reavers joining the field. That will definitely help. It looks like there's also Reaver to that 5 o'clock location. That's going to make Barcode Zerg's job even more difficult. Some Zerglings flooding underneath, but just walking by these High Templar. It's like sniffing for blood. It looks like they're mostly trying to scout. <laughs> sniffing for blood might have found some free, very gas-heavy kills. Instead, walking right back out. So now Barcode Zerg, he's got, he's got this upper left-hand base. He's got that 9 o'clock location. He's got that 11 o'clock location mining. They're a little bit thin, and Grass is also sitting at three bases. It looks like he's managing to get the, the probes to the bottom right. Hurrying them across. The critical thing for, and he's also starting, got a handful of Corsair, just in case there was a Mutalisk switch. He's going to pick a couple Overlords out of the air as well. Realizing this is turning into more of a long-term long match. Eating a bit of a Defiler getting caught out in the open. Dropping an empty Dark Swarm. Nothing else underneath. Ultralisk is joining the field. And a blanket of Psystorm. Well-placed Psystorm on top of them. And there are a good amount of Dragoons, but not enough Zerglings on the opposite corner to really melt through. So these Ultralisks, we'll see how long they last. This might be enough just meat, Zerg meat, to press through the rest of this army. But this is a sizable threat from Grass through that natural expansion to potentially get a soft contain. The Dragoons pulling back, wiping out, it looked like every... Ultralisk on the ground, and that was a significant amount of Ultralisks. Some Zerglings now getting on top of those Dragoons. 
wiping them out fairly rapidly, and a lot of overlords getting donated to the front as well. Momentarily, it looks like we might see a counterattack somewhere on the map. Teal starting to reinforce. Oof. Overlords misrallied and losing a lot of these overlords, which is actually cutting into his supply. Some Zerglings reflooding to go ahead and re-engage these Dragoons in the midfield. And Grass currently trying to flee with what he has. The one problem for Grass now is, is yes, he was able to wipe out a lot of those Ultralisks, but as far as a reinforcement point, he has to walk from all the way where he's got these gateways to his critical holdings in that bottom right-hand corner. Yes, he has a lot of cannons here. He also has uh, several High Templar. He also has Reavers. Actually, he's loading them up in the shuttles. I'll try to keep an eye on that. But essentially, he's got to march that army across a lot of map to defend the critical pieces. Fortunately for him, with those misrallied overlords, so many of them were wiped out that a lot of them are going to have to be rebuilt. And oh, these lurkers donating their lives for free as well. Blood all over the ground. Ultras regrouping. It looks like they're engaging across that 9 o'clock base. And you can see how quickly... Yeah, the Ultras allow these units to get in here, but you can see how quickly those Zerglings peel through these Dragoons. They do so much damage so rapidly. It looks like that High Templar also at risk of dying. Some Zealots now marching in to go ahead and push those Zerglings away from those High Templar and away from those Dragoons. Looks like this High Templar is still going to have to donate his life. But barcodes are in a bit of trouble here because that 9 o'clock base not yet saturated. Upper left-hand corner looks like it is running that double gas, but he's essentially down to two bases and Grast has two bases in his control. And usually as Zerg, you want to stay at least one base ahead. So he needs to start thinking about making favorable exchanges. Now some Archons on the field for Grast. Able to wipe out units in this bottom left-hand corner. If Grast can now macro up, build his army, which he already has, is sitting at 200 supply, nearly fully upgraded, is just missing his shield upgrades. He can start swinging around, start wiping out some of these Zerg holdings. Maybe take out a couple bases or uh, one or two. And if he starts, the, the problem though is if he starts in the upper left, that's going to leave everything in the bottom right exposed. He does have some Reavers to help. He does have the Psystorm to help. But will it be enough? Moving up, some Dark Swarm dropped. Lurkers repositioning in the back corner. You can just see the swarm of spines greeting this army. The Archons pressing forward just have so much shield. To peel through this. The Ultralisks now peeling down to push the rest of this army back. And Grass looks like he's going to end up losing a lot of units. Some reinforcements coming from behind in the form of Ultralisks and Hydralisks to wipe out the remaining Dragoon forces. High Templar getting pinned in the corner, trying to morph into an Archon and drawing back to the defensive location of these cannons on the high ground. But another w army wiped out mid map. It looks like the Archon going to die as well as that High Templar. And every unit counts at this stage of the match. Because this is starting to turn into long-term economic elimination matches. So these Hydralisks dying in open field, those High Templar getting wiped out, it is significant. Grass once again marauding. The Hydralisks peeling back, looking to regroup. Dark Templar looks like it's going to get caught in open field. More Overlords grouping up to the corner. More Creep Colonies being planted. At that 9 o'clock base, the rest of the drones that were latent at other bases now grouping up to that upper 9. So look for Barcode's economy to have a brief pickup. However, Grast, Finn at the 5 o'clock base, he's got one mining base left. It looks like. At the 5 o'clock location. So you got two bases versus one base left. And it's going to come down to exchanges. And Plague does not help Grast's cause. Huge plague. A couple Scourge getting wiped out. Looks like a Corsair trying to take out Overlords overhead. Every mineral, every mineral counts at this stage. More Ultralisks are taking the field. Are these Ultralisks pinned in? I think, I'm not sure if these Ultralisks can actually exit the space. The way the SimCity is constructed. Grass regrouping his army. Looks like he wants to take another shot at this 9 o'clock. There are around 4 Creep Colonies there. Not as many... Lurkers, as there were previously, but there is an Ultralisk on alert. Not a lot of health, actually. Could get very rapidly wiped out. A lot of Ultralisks. How many Ultralisks is this over here? Nearly a full control group of Ultralisks, however. 
in reserve. And honestly, between this and a good swarm, I'm not sure either of these bases can stand. Grass regrouping in the mid nine. Ultos and Zergen starting to group up. It looks like some Reavers finally dropped in the upper right hand base, able to take out the Spire. Looking for additional damage to be done. The Scourge going to fly in. Shuttle taken out. And Grass now careening up the mid lane. Looks like he wants to go ahead and take a shot at that 12 o'clock base. Mostly this is just to get the production. If he can take out that Ultralis Cavern, that would be significant. Backing up, moving back around. Still threatening that 9. He's hit... Looks like he's held off on that shield upgrade. He's just flooding production with High Templar. Wants to have a lot of Psystorm in reserve to deal with whatever his opponent's going to throw at him. More Hydalisks regrouping, more Ultralisks moving across mid-map. And the base continues to mine bottom right. Neither player looks like they want to force an engagement at the moment. Simply because moving into a defensive position might be costly. And as I say that, Grass is starting to, I think he's trying to bait this exact behavior right here. Force units into him. Get the mineral wins here and there as he can. His opponent trying to match his army movements. Move to the south. He's trying to use the Corsair to go ahead and clear the overlords out to go ahead and deny information. However, his opponent still has those lanes pretty well spotted. A lot of drones, a bunch of units, plus a defiler right there. A plague could be absolutely devastating, particularly if the plague comes out early before this battle. Another shuttle moving out, this time with Dark Templar and some ze zealots. Might be able to get the defiler mount. This is undefended, and the Zerg opponent is nowhere near positioned to go ahead and deal with this. Defiler mount, now gone. Actually might be, up the, maybe, might be able to go ahead and wipe out the spawning pool as well. Significant shift in momentum. <coughs> is he going to cycle around and take the hive? Finally, units starting to, to flood in. These are three hero zealots right here. Salute. Not just apes, gorillas right there. Beefy gorillas working on that hive. They did their job though. And that's more minerals that need to be expended. It looks like the... Tech is being rebuilt in that upper left-hand corner as far away from grass drops as possible. Dark Templar wiped out. Dark Templar is kind of hiding in the corner like a coward, as you'd expect of invisible men. And grass once again repositioning with threat at the 9 o'clock. Looked like a, I think the shuttle made its way up to that 12 o'clock location. Quickly got wiped out. Grass has a sizable bank. The bottom right continues to mine, but is starting to look thin. So looking for opportunities to get decent exchanges. A single Defiler dropping. Looking to get a Ninja Plague. Does manage to get an okay Plague. There are Hydralisks to the right. It looks like Grass is happy to engage this. Great size Storm. And just inviting this army to eat a massive amount of size Storm. Unfortunately, catching some of his High Templar with the follow-ups. But just obliterating death from the sky. Reinforcements sneaking in from the right. Picking off some High Templar. Between that exchange, though, now the Ultralis coming from all angles. Want to wipe out what's left of this army. I think Grass can afford to lose this army, though, because he's got such a sizable bank. And really, it's going to be up to Barcode Zerg to make sure that he can go ahead and drop... Additional plagues, additional swarms to get better exchanges. And honestly, at this stage of the match, he might just not even bother with that bottom right-hand corner. If he can just stage up some lurkers, get a contain, might be able to play from there. But currently, he is empty on minerals. And needs to start preserving resources. Yes, he's mining here, but this is not going to last forever. Grass backing off still has plenty of High Templar. In this grouping, the overlords looking up to go ahead and get an eye 
on the rest of this army. More units starting to flood out. Grass should be able to get back up to 200 supply without too much trouble. More Ultralisks being fielded. One problem for Zerg late game is you still need minerals. So yeah, Zerglings trade pretty well, and they're efficient in that regard. The Scourge pressing forward to go ahead and see what they can see. But there's not really a... There's the Archon, where you can just, you know, 50 minerals, get your High Templar, morph them into Archons, let them be beefy late game. But you really don't have that equivalent on the Zerg side of the map. Everything costs minerals. Even Zerglings. Grass trying to sneak another shuttle through. Maybe pick off the Spire. <laughs> Looks like that's going to be shadowed. These are some brave zealots. If I saw this many Ultralisks underneath, and they were just like, yeah, get out of the dropship, I would be like, hell no. Not in a million years. Not those zealots. Like, hell yes, let's do it. Looks like that shuttle is going to survive. Grass back up to 200 supply. 30 supply ahead overall. Lazy Ultra is trying to sit in the back. Bottom right starting to look thin. 9 o'clock base still mining for the Zerg opponent. Upper left is out. Double gas mining though. Grass moving around to the 9 o'clock. While he's doing so, Reaver is just obliterating some Zerglings on the right-hand side of the field. Ultralis peeling up right on top of these Dragoons. And that Reaver is not long for life. Where did he get the minerals for this? All sorts of Ultralisks crushing that army. Reaver's trying to get pot shots as they can. Not quite able to do so. Now the Ultralis is diving down on top of that Dragoon force. Eating some Psy Storms as they go. And regrouping. As things continue though, Grass still getting favorable trades. He's a lot of Dragoons to deal with those Ultralisks. Plenty of Psy Storm to deal with everything in between. And the Zerg is mined out. Unfortunately, he is mined out as well. Sizable bank in Grass's favor. So it's going to come down to Psy Storms, Swarms, and Plagues. And who can... Who can land them on who? Large amount of Hydrals, Zerglings, and Ultralisks. Grouping up. Grass still holding position on the high ground. And we're moving towards what me, what may be the final fight of this match. Great Psy Storms! Well, those Ultralisks were bunched up and out of position to soften them up. The Dragoon's backing up. Reaver's getting caught. The Dragoon's just absolutely melting. More Psy Storms being dropped. Some Observers being picked off in the midst. But there looks like there's enough Dragoons that they're going to be able to go ahead and clear out what's left of that Ultralisk army. And Barcode Zerg does not have enough to replenish what is left. Grass now just has a cleanup operation with the units he has on the ground. All he has to do is remax and start walking around the map. And picking his opponent's holdings off. Starting with, I don't know if he wants to start at the natural... Expansion, actually. Might want to try to attack this upper left. The Dragoon's starting to back off. There's GG. Out of Minerals. Grass takes the game. Thank you guys for joining me for a rare late night cast. Thank you, Artosis, once again for the raid. Hope you guys have a wonderful night. Great to see you. A yeah, yeah, per usual. Truth be told, I'm still a guy in chat. Take care of yourselves. Sleep well. I make sure I raid someone.